All right, Odyssey. Hello. Buddy. Okay, first things first. Hey guys, who are you? Buddy, right, uh, yes. All right. I, I saw you guys at uh, Capitol. I think that was one of your first shows back, huh? Oh! Yes. Yes, it's you. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Yes, and this time I want you to get your ass in the front seat. Yes, I didn't have. It, pissed, it kind of pissed me off because why don't you say something? No, it it's okay. Good, I don't like to take over. No. Kind of Look, yeah. I don't. I don't like to take that's people's right. spots. No, yeah, that's, that's fine. Right. That's right. Totally yeah, fine. Right. Totally right. fine. Right. But no, you always got great stuff, and it was so crowded. <laughs> I mean, your, your room was packed. Uh, actually, this show it's not that much. Actually, this show it's actually it's right. quite nice. Okay. All right, we're in the Odyssey room. Klaus, always a fan favorite. I've been seeing his rooms for over 20 years. They, they never fail to disappoint. And what's really more important <laughs> is the value you get. Uh, at these shows, you can get disenchanted pretty quick when I show the price sheets. Not here, especially when you compare it to the sound quality. <laughs> As well, this will compete with about just about anything you're hearing at the show, and I'm gonna turn it over to Klaus. Just go walk through the gear. Hey guys, um, well, first of all, this is coffee, and this is early in the morning. It is true <laughs> coffee, so just you know. Uh, what well, price wise, it's relative because obviously the turntable setup that is quite a bit of money. You know, sure. The direct drive, Avenger. <laughs> we have here DS audio setup. The O3. Um, we have also here the Bob Graham arm, which we're sharing the room with. You know, this is his Phantom Elite, which is phenomenal, which is absolutely phenomenal. Then we're running um, uh, the Colibri, Van and Hoel Colibri. Yeah, Van and Hoel. Okay, okay, so that, <laughs> yeah, that is big box. Yes. So we're running, by the way, guys, uh, Ionizer, DS Audio Ionizer. I don't make any money out of that. But it does work. You oh, that's lived. TS Audio that does that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you haven't heard, you haven't lived until um, you, know, you heard a record that has zero static on it. Okay. It's amazing. Uh, running into the Symphonic Line phono stage, the reference phono stage. So that's the phono setup. Then we're running my old trusted Symphonic Line Vibrato CD player. This is my own personal unit. It is 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And I will never ever, I will, I will die with that thing. I don't want to update it, nothing. Yes, new technology is better, but the tone on this one is just perfect for me, mm. which, you know, fully analog. And we're running it into a symphonic line, a Leuchtung preamplifier. Now we're getting into the um, Odyssey, where I have the Odyssey Stratasys, yeah. which most people at this point will know it. I mean, we made, over the last 20 plus years, we made, you know, over 7,500 amplifiers. Wow. So there are quite a few out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's a chrome, which... you got different finishes, face plates that you can do. Yeah, we have... Uh, the chrome I'm not making anymore because my chroma pissed me off. And uh -oh. that really was kind of very, very <laughs> difficult. Uh, but, yeah, anodizing. Everything is brushed aluminum, anodized, laser engraved. So we got black, we got silver, clear, we got um, uh, copper, we got gold. You know, I mean, uh, if you want to have, you know, yellow with pink stars, I cannot help you. But <laughs> if you want, if you want, you know, uh, like purple, you know, okay. one customer wanted like the old Volkswagen cars where okay. you had all different kind of, you know, colors yeah. and different. Uh, one guy Multi wanted to make it exactly like this. It actually turned out great, you know. Yeah. So anyway, that's that. And then on the speakers. I did yes. not have. I do not have the liquids like what you had in the last time at the okay. show. Okay. Uh, simply because they would overpower the room. We would have a room box in here. Mm -hmm. Physics, just simple physics. Small room, small speakers. So mm -hmm. we got the two-way kismet, and these right now are very special in a couple of regards. One, <clears throat> um, build quality. So we got the Scanspeak Revelator and Scanspeak uh, Beryllium. Uh, right now, this is, as far as I know, the least expensive beryllium, scan speak beryllium pair on the market. Now, there are different beryllium's popping up everywhere now. And of course, that's an old technology, I think, Yamaha in the 50s or whatever, right? But um, there are the certain soft domes that I like, including, you know, of course, you know, the uh, 9700 from, from, from scan speak, the RAS. And most of the scan speaks are right over here in the you know where the other tweeters are here. And then there's a scan speak beryllium right over here. 
it's so fantastic. It's it's ridiculous. And um, airy, it's easy to work with, easy to design with, and it nearly never kind of pops up into aggressiveness. So that's very, very, very good. And uh, there's $2,000 in drivers in here, and the speakers are $4,200. Hmm. No, completely done. It's a force that's, yeah, crossover. quite a bargain. <clears throat> yeah, and, you, and the crossover parts, courtesy, of course, is ridiculous. Plus, you know, big W. The quality of finish as well. Well, that's a custom finish. You know, is that right? Smuck away. Yeah, this is beautiful. So, um, well, are, I just the liquids, are the liquids better? Of course they are. But again, you know, I mean, you have to be, the, this is a shit box, let's face it, you know. Mm -hmm. Last year we were able to take the credenza out, but we were four people. Mm -hmm. And this time now they want us, you know, because it's a soft top, $4,000, you break it, you know. Oh, uh, wow. Let's, let's, let's yeah. get fucked with that. So anyway. Um, but you have brought is, acoustic treatments. Huh? You have brought acoustic treatments, which a lot of people don't do. Um, so, that, yeah, you've done the best you could. Well, yeah. I mean, we got gig stuff, you know, so diffuser, diffuser here. Uh, usually I have... Uh, um, um, not if you um, uh, absorption. Usually, I have diffusers right next, mm -hmm. which I really love. But we don't have we don't have room. We just don't have room for it. Yeah, you know it won't work. And of course, you know, as always, a little bit different. But as always, my uh, um, um, my setup. Yes, beautiful. Check it out, curtains <laughs> out, you know, lights, right. etc. I mean, it's that's that both lots of extra work. But there's a reason for it. What you want is you want people to completely relax, especially in a show like this, as big as this. Right, so decompress, yeah. There's so where people rush from one way to another mm -hmm. and really don't get an impression. People come in here, look 10 seconds, and sitting in the boombox area over there, and then they think they know what the system does, you know, bullshit, you know. So um, what you have is when you listen, you don't just listen with your ears. You listen with all your senses. You sit there, you listen with your body. Most importantly, we're visual animals. You know, 90% of our senses are directed towards sight. So if you sit down, your body relaxes, you have good music, you know, um, you don't have anything aggressive going to you, and you have a nice, calming environment, you can actually sit down and take in the music mm -hmm. much, much, much better, much more intense, much more deeper under the skin, so to speak, right. you know. Than what you do otherwise. It's an experience. It's uh, music is an experience, not just what you hear yeah, out of it. Well, and, uh, you know, the flip side is, you know, if it's becoming a business, you know, then you know you're losing some of the hobby and the experience, you know. But, yes. Uh, it, it is what it is, you know. Uh, this shows a pain in the ass, but. <laughs> Can know. I ask you real quick about the stands because these are beautiful. I make those. Do you sell those? Yeah. Okay. So what they are essentially is um, it's very simple. <clears throat> You know, this is a uh, um, two-inch MDF. Okay. And then they have a couple of marks because they used mine. The stands that I wanted to use didn't, uh, and long story short, uh, this has been used before. <clears throat> so, and then here we have some veneer. You can have it fully veneered. You can have uh, pretty much anything available. Okay. Including painted, yada, yada. And then these are just four, five, or six-inch rounds. Let me cut, brush, and uh, anodize. Okay. And you can get that one in different colors as well. Beautiful, yeah. So, and <clears throat> I customize, I actually do quite a bit of those, and I customize everything because some people might have an alcove, you know, which, like me, I have mm -hmm. exactly 56 inches between my racks, my, my, my record racks. So I made myself one. That's how I started with it, you know. Because okay. I couldn't find anything that was big enough and or where I fit everything. And um, what you do is you go ahead and um, draw it out, whatever you want, and then we build it. You know, so it will be custom pricing based on whatever. Custom size, made to yeah. order. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the only <clears throat> excuse me, the only restrictions we have, of course, is that the sheet's coming forty-eight by no, ninety-six. Okay. So forty-eight is fine because we're cutting it in half, right? So it's twenty-four or twenty-three something with a cutoff, and then ninety-six maximum. Okay. Uh, so we did actually quite a few of video stuff, you know, on that big screen where you have the whole thing and then bring the towers up across, you know, from, from on the sides of the screen and then on the bottom do center channel, etc. It looks quite, it can look quite beautiful. Yeah, this looks great. And, and you make the amp stands too that are kind of even unique. They're not just a stereotypical square. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot well, of actually, flavor. That, actually, that is not mine. That is actually a friend of mine made that for me. So oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah this is just those are cool too. 
and the wife doesn't know that I took him, which is good. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, they so, look like they fit in with them, so yeah. Anyway, that's, uh, yeah, that's why I have it. Um, but uh, price-wise, you know, on the stands, you're looking, I don't know, you're looking probably in the neighborhood with everything completely anodized, yada, yada, or painted for that matter. Uh, we're looking probably in the $250 range per, oh, okay. per day. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's pretty re reasonable, yeah. Uh, and it sounds good. Is it the best sounding? No, of course not. <laughs> what is, right? But it sounds actually very, very good. You know, it's pretty dead. It's MDF. Yeah. Two inch, for heaven's sake. That's heavy. a lot. It's yeah, it's very thick. Heavy. Yeah. So, and then, uh, last not least, of course, we're doing all magnet cables. Magnet, as okay. Always, Dave because magnet. For one, they're phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Not just, and they're very reasonable, actually, for what they do, uh, but they're phenomenal cable. They're very, very good synergistically with our gear. And I just love it. I love the tone of it. I love the three-dimensionality of it. It's just it's just one of these goosebumpy kind of additions, you know. And as far as Magnus is concerned, right here. Great, come on. <laughs> yes, I have some fans of Legacy Magnon cables. They still use them from, uh -huh. what, 20 years ago? Yeah, so I, uh, I'm, I'm Craig Buckles. I own Magnon Cables now, and I bought the company in 2010 from okay. David. Uh, and um, so all the legacy cables are still being made. Uh, so if you still want a 5i or signature speaker cable, okay. it's still available. So wasn't Dave um, pouring the dielectric himself in, on the cable? Pouring the dielectric? Well, the, uh, the coating on the cable itself. Um, no. Um, the, 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 the 5i has always been made by pulling a, a ribbon through a Teflon tube. Oh, okay, okay. And, and so that's how they're still made. Okay. And then uh, the upgrade cables, like what we're using here now is the Silver Reference, which is my top cable. And so the ribbon, instead of a bronze ribbon, is silver. And, um, and then the, it's still pulled through a Teflon tube, but it's filled with helium and sealed. Okay. And, um, you know, some, uh, some a little bit different geometry that I've learned about over time to improve the sound even more. Oh, nice. Get, get more of the, the spatial information. And, okay. Um, you know, just I, as I've done this more and more, I find everything matters. You mm -hmm. know, the, uh, on the uh, signature speaker cables, the jackets were changed from the nylon weave that they used to be to a cotton, 100% cotton cover. Fantastic change, but yeah, is that, that right? That made a yeah. huge difference. I really, I did Klaus's cables, and he he was uh, crazy about it. You know, the, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, you've always tried to you know get your cables off the nylon carpet, right? Because nylon stores energy. <laughs> And as the you know elect or the you know the electron field flows past the carpet, it can store energy for a microsecond and then give it back, and that's smearing your transients. And, okay, that's and, interesting. And time, you know, domain, and and so yeah, the the cotton covers made a world of difference. Uh, I uh, I beefed up the uh, terminations, uh, you know, the original cables. Oh, is that I right? Had a okay. Bottleneck at each end, and and I've uh, eliminated the bottlenecks. And oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because it is a ribbon that has to come to a point at some point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, so it's it transitions to a round wire, so you can make a good termination there, and uh, and then I, uh, I I since some some people object to the. Four and a half inch wide ribbon. Not, you know. You're sure, the wife acceptance I, I, factor I, yeah, of those. Yes, has always been a challenge. Right. But I think they're cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and so I do make a half width where um, I, I I take half the width of the metal, but then stack it up. I, I double it so the uh, okay. the, the actual cross sectional area or the gauge equivalent is gauge same. is the same. Yeah. yeah. Equivalent okay. Gauge. And um, you know, put a piece of uh, Teflon sheet between them so they don't interact electrically and uh, change the capacity. And then on those, they're actually narrow enough that I can, uh, you know, I, I, I can terminate those direct into a connector. Okay. And, and eliminate some more connections actually. So, um, and uh, you know, of course, uh, over time I've uh, in, improved the quality of metals. Sure. You know, I buy all all very high quality oxygen free, high purity copper and silver. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I just keep building different things, trying trying to make it just a little better. Well, and, it's good that uh, and, uh, you know, yeah, set, you took it over for Dave. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Met a lot of wonderful people. I'm, I'm building them uh, myself right, right in Indiana. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, Anderson, Indiana. It so American-made. Yeah, it's kind of a family business. My Do you basically build to order? Is that... Yeah. Do you sell direct much. so people would contact you directly? Um, or do you no, have a dealer I, I network? I sell direct. I sell through dealers. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's about six dealers around the country and a few overseas. And, okay. So uh, they can contact your website and get directed to the dealer. Yeah. And, and Klaus is kind of like a dealer for me. Okay. He, so you just he, call. He often will combine uh, system with that. cables with right. a system sales so he can sell them as well. Yeah, and I want to just. Where are my better percentages? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I want to point out one thing that uh, I always appreciate about Odyssey in the rooms is that you kind of throw a uh, wrench in the works. People always think, budget, they ask me, budget, usually, what do you spend the most on? And, you know, in general, it's best to recommend speakers, um, higher budget, because there's a lot of delta there between budgets. But here's a perfect example of where you could put really expensive source equipment, electronics, and a very economical, relatively speaking, speaker, and it does it fits perfectly. And so this kind of throws always as exceptions to every rule. You can put these speakers in the highest level electronics and not have any drawbacks, you know, relatively speaking. And in many cases, you're getting superior performance because it's all in the engineering, implementation, crossover, and again, beautiful finish. So I think next we're going to actually listen to some sound. Synergy. Synergy, yes. synergy, synergy. That's also why Craig comes in so beautifully here. Um, and also, let me let me let me just throw one thing out for Greg. <laughs> is that um, it's not just my stuff, you know. So I'm gonna start building. I'm doing this for 35 years. So I have a lot of friends, and even if it's not my stuff, and I'm, they're asking me, hey, can you get me this and that and whatever, you know. So system building, even with non-symphonic line, non-Odyssey. Um, the emotion, the goosebumps, the turn of the lights, close your eyes, drift away kind of goosebumps, you know, uh, um, aspect. The three dimensionality, pinpointing the nice wires of sound stage, <coughs> which all components have big time, which I need to cover with cables, you know. <coughs> uh, the dynamics, the snap, all of that travels actually in most, in nearly all cases, with a system on this cable. Mm. So there are some cables out there that are very, very good, but very specific, you know, because, I mean, uh, cables more than anything else are slaves to synergy, right? Mm -hmm. So they're really the bitches of the rest of the system. But um, there are exceptions to the rule, and I haven't found really yet one instance where I recommend it or where we had the uh, Craig's cables, where we had the magnet, and it just didn't work. You know, so that's a big, big, big positive yeah. because cables, I mean, God, it's a freaking jungle out there. What yes. do you mean? I mean, you cannot go four rooms without mm -hmm. hitting a new a cable. A new cable company, right? yeah. So um, it's, it's, it's proven, it's reasonable, you know, and it is, I mean, for me personally, if you like what I'm doing, you know, then it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, a it's part of the synergy that you talked yeah, about. Well, yeah. One of one of David Magnum's original design parameters was being natural, neutral, and you know the job of a cable is to get out of the way. Yeah, and not being a tone control, control, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you, and, and so you know we try to keep them, you know, tonally neutral. You know, it's not going to do anything to your system. Do less harm than anything but, else. Yeah. Let the music do it. Great. Well, let's uh, let's hear some music. Right. You, you picked an awesome it. track. Let's fucking go. 